This episode of The Edge is brought to you by Audible.com, offering more than 180,000 titles for smartphone, tablet, and desktop. To get a free audiobook of your choice and help Trek.fm at the same time, visit audibletrial.com slash trek.fm. And also by Enterprise in Space, an international program of the nonprofit National Space Society. Find out how you can help science and education and become a virtual crew member aboard the NSS Enterprise Orbiter by visiting enterpriseinspace.org. And if you want to join the conversation and share your thoughts on this episode, join the Babel Conference, our listeners group on Facebook. Just type B-A-B-E-L into the Facebook search field. We look forward to seeing you there. Hey, this is Jeff Russo. I'm the composer from Star Trek Discovery, and you're listening to Trek FM. What have you done out there on the edge of Federation space? Welcome, listeners, to Postcards from the Edge. I'm your host, Amy Nelson, and we're doing a special recording of Postcards. No, Discovery hasn't started up again, but we did get the Season 2 trailer that came out from the San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, today, I've got Rob Chapman. He is a patron on Trek FM. Rob, thank you for coming on Postcards with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. Now, this is your first time you've been on the show. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your wonderful accent and your Trek story? Like, how did you get into Star Trek? Right. So uh, how did I get into Star Trek? Um, cool. um, so I was probably about maybe 12 or 13. So just starting secondary school in the UK, uh, I guess that's the equivalent of high school in, in the US. And um, that's when I started getting into Star Trek. Um I started watching, um, it was when DS9 and Voyager were both showing at the same time. So um, probably, yeah, halfway through DS9 in the beginning of, of Voyager. Um, and I didn't have the easiest time growing up. So Star Trek, specifically Voyager, which is my favourite, um, was a bit of a, like a security blanket, a bit of a, a bit of escapism. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds a bit cheesy, but they were, you know, it's kind of like a surrogate family. So, um, yeah, so, so that, and, and also I, um, I watched DS9 Voyager with my dad. So it was kind of like a bonding thing we had together, which was really nice. Um, so yeah, and then I had a bit of a break, um, while I was doing my GCSEs and A levels and then university. And then I came back to Star Trek. I mean, I'd always watched it, but I kind of, it kind of, uh, yeah, fizzled out a bit. And then I came back to it, uh, a few years ago. Um, when I discovered the whole fandom and, you know, joined Twitter and, and connected with lots of people. And I had no idea that fandom was out there. So it reignited my right, love of, right. of Star Trek and obviously discovering Trek FM um, and all the great shows there. Um, yeah, completely reignited my love of Star Trek. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Because I'm sort of the same way. It's like found this Trek FM and just it blossomed so much. Yeah, yeah. exactly the same with me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Just glad and, and honored to have you on Postcards. Well, today we are going to discuss the fan response to Season 2 trailer. Uh, listeners, if you would like to participate and share your response, please post your comments on the Babel Conference. That's our listeners group on Facebook. Type Babel, B-A-B-E-L, into the search field and it will come right up. And I want to give props out to Wes Huntington. He was the one who sort of put it in my head. Oh, Amy's got to start rebooting postcards. And I thought, oh, yes, I do. Let's get the fan response. So, Wes, thank you for keeping me uh, on my toes. And this episode is dedicated to you. All right, Rob. So you have watched the trailer. I have. <laughs> and so I want to know what's your initial thoughts when you saw it? What was the first thing you thought of? Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, just, it was, I was kind of speechless. Um, admittedly, not probably as speechless as I was when I saw the season one trailer. I think for, obvi for okay. obvious reasons, because we hadn't seen any discovery, but it was still, it was just amazing. It was, um, there was so much that was good about it. Um, yeah, there were, um, I think the the fact that Pike's we see Pike in it, 
the end, there's some amazing shots of the Discovery and Enterprise, some like real close up shots that I don't think, I don't think we'd had, um, shots that had stayed on the ships for quite as long in, um, in season one of Discovery. So the shots in the trailer mm-hmm. were really cool. Um, I loved, I loved the, the TOS Discovery like merging of uniforms. That was really cool. And I don't know if you've read, um, uh, Desperate Hours, um, where they give an explanation of, why uh, of the uniform differences so it was nice to see that coming into effect in 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 the show um right but yeah there was just so much going on it was it was just quite intense so it was you're just trying to follow what was going what was happening and what was going on the drama the intensity it was very exciting and there was some yes i know a lot this this turned a lot of people off well some people off i've seen on twitter but i really liked the comedy moments in it i thought they were really good they made me chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when it dropped, I was uh, on a traveling day for my summer vacation. And so I was on the road for six hours. And of course, not on my phone because you have to drive safely. And so I get to my destination, finally get on Wi-Fi and just things blown, blowing up, you know, everyone's commenting. I was thinking of Amy, you know, with, <laughs> of course we have, this is the power of math people when Tilly said that. And so everyone's like, Oh, Amy, da, 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 you know, and so I was like, what is going on? And so that was my first introduction. I'm like, well, there's gotta be something going on here. And then I see, Oh, the trailer dropped. And yes, I absolutely loved, of course, Tilly's comment. This is the power of math, people, and could not be happier uh, to see them. So that tells me that they're going to be bringing in, you know, the science and the math that goes into it. So very excited for that. I loved seeing the uh, characters and their their interaction with each other because now you know we have season one and they they've taken hold in my heart it's really surprising to see especially as i'm you know recording these deep dives on on the edge main show and to just sort of analyze each of the characters and then to see them in action again just brings the excitement uh to the forefront and uh, the sneeze joke at the end. Yeah, I was, uh, whatever. We'll see what happens with that. But, you know, it, there was some, uh, really good humor, the connection and the chemistry that each of them have. Uh, I was definitely very, very excited. Love the exploration aspect. And I'm very excited for Pike as well. This is going to be awesome. So. And of, and of course, we've got, um, the uh, number one. Um, yes, Rebecca Romaine. Yeah, yeah. Which we didn't well, see. She wasn't really, yeah, she wasn't in the trailer, no. but uh, it was announced that she will be joining as number one. So very yeah. excited for that because I, I love Rebecca Romaine too. She's, yeah. oh, I think it's going to be so great. <laughs> oh, so, well, we've had another terrific response on the Babel conference. We had 118 comments as of this recording. So let's see what everyone has to say. Um, I need to start with the first tweet that I got from Rob Vaughn. And he says, just three words, bring it on. <laughs> and it's like, yep, this is how we're going to start the show. Um, so, Rob, let's just uh, go back and forth and read what the listeners had to say. Right. Okay. So, um I hope I'm pronouncing people's names <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, Chris uh, Tribuzio, Tribuz, Tribuzio um, said, uh, what's there to say, but fantastic. From the special effects to the humour to the actors, I think the word anticipation can be a word used a lot by fans. Absolutely. Liam Kerrigan says, I love the trailer. My main issue with season one was how out of place it felt in terms of costumes and sets, considering where it was in the timeline. This trailer showed from the off that they are addressing that. Also, it was good to see some of the lighthearted humor coming back. We saw last season that this crew can be warriors. The trailer seems to indicate that next season we'll get to see how they handle being explorers. Yeah, I like how a few people have pointed out the the comedy. So obviously that the comedy moments, people seem to like that. Um, Frosty Winnipeg said, season two can't be worse than season one. 
Uh, no Rebecca Romaine in the pre- preview, so that means she does not show up until episode three, I'm guessing. Yeah, so does the trailer only show the first two episodes? I I didn't understand that. I mean, we know they haven't finished filming quite yet, but yeah. does that mean that the trailer's only made up of the first two scenes from the first two episodes? Well, I suppose when we saw the season one trailer... Um, I remember um, Rain Wilson's character, <laughs> the, na- the name of the Harry Mudd. <laughs> he-, he was in it and he wasn't in until the f- third, fourth, maybe even later episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll have to go back and watch the season one trailer and see if there were any later episodes in season one that were included in the trailer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it, yeah, I guess it is a, a little bit disappointing that, that um, certain characters weren't weren't featured in the in the trailer L- like Laurel. Yeah. Um exactly, which we better be seeing more of. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, Greg Malumbi says, "I liked how fun this trailer looked. I welcome the lighter tone to the series." And I agree it was definitely uh season 1 was heavier yeah. and you know, and there were a lot of comments about that. So this one is looking to be lighter. Yeah, I agree. Um, Conrad Hutchins said, absolutely loved it. Pine looks to be a fantastic addition. And I think the re- reimagined TOS uniforms look great. And he's put in brackets, I want one. <laughs> I do too. Um, also, whilst there's going to be a main uh, mystery running through this season, it looks like they're going to be exploring and having fun along the way. I understand that some people can't see beyond the timeline and canon, but I'm just so excited to have new Trek that I'm totally along for the ride. Hit it. <laughs> exactly yeah there's always going to be those that are talking about the canon and the re-imaging and stuff like that but yep i i agree hit it (laughs) mark boder says like others i enjoyed the lighter tone i also like the attention paid to the rest of the bridge crew i hope they get more to do this season and i think we will be seeing uh an expansion of the characters of the bridge crew yeah, I, I really hope we do, because the bridge crew, we didn't get to see a huge amount of them, but characters like Detmer and I can't remember the other, um, the, is it the ops officer that sits next to her? There was a m- moment in the trailer where um, I think Pike and Burnham were in these weird little spacecraft that were out of control. And, and and Burnham says, like, Discovery's got you, right? Right, ladies? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, absolutely. Yeah, right? And they share this look, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. Another comedic, lighter moment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the look of panic on their faces. I think even, even mm-hmm. Saru says, uh, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, so Michael Wong says, I'm thrilled that the central theme of season two seems to be solving a scientific mystery and searching for Spock along the way rather than war. This brings us back to Star Trek's exploratory roots that inspired me so much as a kid. I'm already on the edge of my seat, wondering about what kinds of profound discoveries the crew is going to make. Let's see what's out there. Yes. Yeah, getting away from war and going towards exploration definitely does get us back to Star Trek. Absolutely. I agree. Eric Schmitz says, pure fun. Love the look of the Enterprise and those classic uniforms. Pike seems to be the perfect leader for Discovery to become family. Also, the spirit of exploration that we kind of missed in the first season. Overall, just an awesome trailer. P.S. The music of Netflix trailer is way better than the one from CBS. So, did you see the Netflix trailer or the CBS or both? And do you know what he's talking about? Because I do not. I I don't think, you know, that hadn't even occurred to me. I, I've watched the Netflix trailer because I think a lot of the CBS, um, like the CBS, um, the Star Trek CBS Twitter account, a lot of the videos that they put out don't work in the UK. And I assume probably a lot of other countries as well. So there's uh-huh. a Star Trek Netflix um, Twitter account. And those videos do work. But oh, I hadn't even okay. looked. To say, I just assumed that they, they were the same. So, yeah. So, I know. I didn't even think no. to look or s- see if there was a difference. So, good job, Eric, for pointing that yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about the CBS one, but the one that I watched, the Netflix one, the music in that was really, really good. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Ben Nicholson says the trailer seems to hit the mark with the spread of new Star Trek and pre-Calvin Star Trek. I'm glad they are giving barely used bridge crew more time and hope that continues throughout season two. Yeah, we definitely see them with lines to say instead mm-hmm. of just mm-hmm. bodies on the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wes Huntington says, uh, I loved the trailer. I smiled when I heard <laughs> Mary Wiseman <laughs> said the uh, the power of math people <laughs> it's going to be a fun ride also can't wait to see rebecca remains number one they nailed the casting with that choice will we get uh yeoman colt i have no idea who'd, who'd play her but she should appear as well in the words of the lenny kravitz song that's in the trailer i want to get away and fly away Oh, I thought you were going to sing that part, Rob. (laughs) Nobody (laughs) wants to hear my singing voice. (laughs) I want to get away. Yeah, well, I'll stop right there. (laughs) So is that the music that was featured in the CBS trailer? Yeah. Obviously, we didn't have that at all in the Netflix trailer. Oh. No, we didn't have that. Well, then your music must have been good because you enjoyed it. Oh, now I I want to watch that one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Maribel Meyer says, I haven't watched the trailer repeatedly, but it whet my appetite for more, and I'm debating when to do my rewatch of season one. I like Anson Mount as Pike. He seems to fit in well. I'm excited to hear of Rebecca Romaine, but not yet sure she's the right choice. I look forward to being proven wrong. Well, I think you will be proven wrong, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I really like Rebecca Romaine, so... Yeah, and I agree um, with that, the Anson Mount um, comment. He does seem to fit really well. He just, I can't. Yeah. I, the moment I saw him, I can't imagine anyone else doing it now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And seeing the pictures and the side-by-sides, I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah. He's, yeah, spot on for sure. So, Rob, want to ask you, have you done a rewatch of season one already? or Not the whole way through. I've kind of dipped in and out. Um, but I think now I'll, I'll have to. <laughs> Yes. A full, yep. uh, at, you know, chronological order with rewatch. Yep. Do a little binge watching yep, there. <laughs> definitely. Uh, Patrick Carlin uh, says, I'm really looking forward to Anson Mount as Pike. The immediate vibe I got from him is a combination of the Jeffrey Hunter Pike and the Bruce Greenwood Pike. And he blends them perfectly, in my opinion. Yeah, Comple- I agree. The, those, yeah, Jeffrey Hunter and Bruce Gre- Greenwood so embody in my opinion, Pike. Mm. So it's, I think he's going to do great. Yeah, I agree. Christopher Baca says, I like the trailer for season two better than season one. I love all the original series inspired designs from the new spacesuits to the classic uniform colors. They look really sharp. Looking forward to seeing Pike number one and Spock. Yeah. So, uh, I've been, recorded saying that I'm not too happy about uh, Spock coming on board. So we'll just have to see how that plays out for me. Is there, is there any particular reason why you're not too happy about Spock (laughs) coming on? Well, I think just because he is such an icon and, you know, there's, Starfleet is huge. And so why do we always have to keep on going back to the same characters when we can explore and develop and learn to love other characters? So I I know there's the fan service and and I love Spock. Don't get me wrong. I just want to expand my universe a little bit more. No, I'm I'm with you. I, I see what you mean completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and apologies again if I'm saying the names wrong. <laughs> Curtis Skiabarassi um, says, TOS uniform looks great and modern. I'm glad we won't see Spock for a while at least. I think it's safer not to show him on screen. We all have expectations of Spock, so maybe we will get a better understanding of his character this season without seeing him on screen. See, now I can agree with that. Yes, definitely. But we will But we. We will be seeing him on screen, right? They've confirmed that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we will be. Um, but yeah, I think like Curtis is saying, it's not going to be till later yeah. and yeah. maybe. And so, yeah, we will probably get to understand him better, but not see him on screen as much, oh, which yeah. for me, that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Dan McWilliams says, look at that moment where Burnham looks wide-eyed at something red. There's a small, high-pitched sound effect that sounds like Spock's sick bay readout. I think Spock is going to appear at some point. So, yep. Uh, Nicholas Anastasio says, this is the power of math, people. <laughs> Don't lie now, Amy. How many times have you re replayed just this line? <laughs> well, I have replayed it in reading all my tweets and Facebook comments. And yes, I have seen it a lot. <laughs> um, Nicholas continues, uh, it looks like more and more of Star Trek's DNA is being injected into disco and it's all good with me. And then he lists the things he loves. He says, I love the classic costumes, classic enterprise, classic Trek humour, classic Trek mystery, combined with modern characters, modern action, modern aesthetic, modern music. Perfect combination of new and old for this trailer. Hit it, guys. It can't come soon enough. Yes. I, I Yep, it's classic and modern. Love it. <laughs> Nicholas Paul Collinson says, I'm so excited. I really love how it looks like we will see the crew functioning as more of a cohesive unit. Tilly is a beautiful ray of sunshine as ever, and I'm sure interested to see her growth as a character this season. The visuals look stunning, and the inclusion of a bit more humor and just the crew generally having fun together looks like it's going to be a great ride. Also, I know she wasn't in the trailer, trailer, but I'm excited to see Laurel as the new Klingon Chancellor trying to fight the Klingon patriarchy. Patriarchy. As soon as I told my partner about this, her response was, yeah, hex the pet patriarchy, Laurel. So, yes, I definitely, I love Laurel's character. I love Mary Chifo, as was mentioned when we did that deep dive on the edge. I really want to see how the Klingons are going to be intertwined with this new space mystery. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing more of Laurel. She was one of my one of my favorite characters in season one, so I'm looking forward to seeing what role she has in season two. Um, yeah, yeah, her storyline, how that continues. It'll be, yeah, it'll be mm -hmm. very interesting. Uh, Dennis Tremethick says, I can't wait until the new season starts. What a fantastic trailer. I love the new Pike. I love the new take on the uniforms. I love the new plot. This is a dream come true. Could only be better with a cameo by Marina Sirtis. <laughs> and of course, Dennis, we know he was just kissing up and wanted his post read because he knows I love Marina. And of course, it would be great to have her show up. Not too sure it will happen, but... Yep, it got your post read on postcards. So well done, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I think the listeners are knowing how to uh, to get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric Brady says, uh, the original series is my favorite Trek, but Discovery is my second favorite. At this rate, it might pass TOS as my favorite. So excited for season two. So, Rob. Yes. Uh we, you said Voyager's your favorite. Is. So where is Discovery? And could do you think that Discovery could replace Voyager as your favorite? I don't want to be a downer, but I don't think it. I don't think it could. But just because Voyager holds such a special place in my heart, I don't. I right. don't. Think, I don't. No matter how good Discovery, what would be or is, it, it could never really replace it. <laughs> but do you know what? I think it is. It is high up. Um, it's not quite DS9 because DS9 would be my second favorite, but I think it's it's mm. probably third, um, and probably yeah, probably getting possibly even higher. So I can. It's nice to see that people are saying that it's it's either their favorite, second favorite, or it's you know it's it, mm -hmm. so it's it's clearly doing very well. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Uh, TNG will always <laughs> be my favorite. I just I am sure of it. Um, just it has a special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, Discovery is definitely getting up there, especially as I, you know, do these podcasts and talk and rewatch it. Um, there's so much to love about it. Um, and I'm doing my Deep Space Nine and I'm enjoying it very much. So I can't, you know, compare it completely. Um, but with what I've watched, um, I'm I'm really enjoying Deep Space Nine, but I think Discovery might be a little bit higher. But 
yeah, I, I'm not all that big into ranking. I just know that TNG is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so where, whereabouts are you in DS9, roughly? Season four. Okay, okay. Yep. Season four, about a third of the way. I just finished uh, episode six, I think. So it'd be interesting to see where Discovery is placed once you finish DS9, if it's higher or just or below. Yeah. 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 Um, so Jamar Williams says it would be nice to buy season one on iTunes. I eagerly anticipate season two, at which time I will renew my CBS subscription, this time commercial free. I will look to the Babel Conference to inform me of the season two premiere. Well, of course, we will keep <laughs> all of you updated uh, as soon as we know anything about Discovery season two, of course. Um, so Rick Everson says, I love the first season and the trailer felt like seeing some old friends again, which is how I used to feel about returning seasons of the other Trek. So I take this as a positive sign the Discovery crew has found their place in my heart. Oh, also, everything looked amazing and exciting, but there wasn't enough Saru. Though if it's true we see his home world, maybe there is more Saru later in the season. And I hope Linus is okay. That cold seems nasty. <laughs> yeah, I, com I, um, I, I completely echo what Rick says there. Um, yeah, it does feel like coming back to seeing old friends again after a, a, a break. So yep. that must be a positive sign if, if that's how, if that, well, anyway, if that's how I feel. Um, yeah. And that's, yep. That's how I feel too. He said it great. And I, again, I agree because I'm a big Saru fan. It, there can never be enough Saru. <laughs> I always want more. Um, and yeah, if we get to see his home world, that would be amazing. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm reading uh, Fear Itself at the moment, the book that's focused uh -huh. on, on him. So it'd be great to see more of him and his, his backstory. Um, so Josh, uh, Tro, I'm not sure. <laughs> he, he can correct us. Uh, he says that trailer was pure dope <laughs> and Romain should lend the series a certain mystique. I like what he did. <laughs> I like what he did yeah. there. <laughs> if you don't get that reference, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Um, on the other hand, I am a little bit bummed at realizing the season, or at least Pike's arc, will now probably end with the incident that left Pike crippled, as we see him in the menagerie. Yeah, it's that's one of the pitfalls of knowing what's going to happen, you know. But I, I, it'll be interesting to see his backstory. So, yeah. See, I'm in the um, unique position, and it's, this is blasphemy saying this and to so many oh. Trek, Trek fans, that I haven't actually seen that much of the original series. I've seen a few episodes here and there, but I don't know a huge amount about it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listeners, hope you were sitting down for that reveal. <laughs> and we still love you, Rob. <laughs> it's on my to-do list. I'm, I will do it. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, don't even worry. Listeners give me crap all the time that I haven't watched Deep Space Nine. So it, it's okay. <laughs> if anyone says anything, just send them my way. I'll set them straight. <laughs> Andrew Boot says, I'm excited when the trailer first aired. This certainly seems like a different tone to the first series of Discovery, more lighthearted. Not sure about that elevator scene. That seemed a bit unnecessary. I like the Enterprise uniforms. They look faithful to the classic TOS design, just updated. Can't wait for the mini episodes sometime later this year. So, yeah, that was a, also an announcement at SDCC that we're going to be having these 10 to 15 minute, you know, mini episodes. And one of them will be Saru. So that'll be good. Yay. We'll have a Harry Mud one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to those as well. And when those drop, we will, of course, do a postcards episode about those as well. I wonder if the um, those short treks will be on the main characters or whether they'll have some of the bridge crew as well. How much? Yeah. Well, that they have a Harry Mudd and he's not a main character. Yeah, so yeah. there's hope there. Yeah. Jared Prophet says, uh, I loved every second of the trailer and I am super looking forward to season two. The photo tease of Linus before the trailer and then seeing him in the trailer was cool. Even if it was just a sneeze gag, the fun and adventure level seems to be high Last season was great, but this season being less dark is super welcome. Yeah. 
I've seen that a lot. I'm sorry, I was, I was going to say, I do, I do like the, how they release little things before, like, like um, Jared was saying, the, the photo teaser Linus, you know, get, builds the anticipation. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did have some uh, response on Twitter, and we have Taborg, and he says, Great trailer. Can't wait to see the crew and look forward to exploring the Spock-Burnham relationship. I love the Constitution uniforms. Excited by the idea of a genuine space mystery to explore. Linus the Sarian looks awesome, but the sneeze joke left me cold. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, Bruce Gibson said, what really stands up to me is the adventure exploring the mysterious. That's exciting. Also, I enjoy seeing a lot of Captain Pike and the humor I'm on the crew. I'm suspicious that the Linus sneezing scene was filmed only for the trailer. Hmm, possibly. <laughs> hmm, yeah. And there was um, some debate going back and forth about it being like the Orville and, you know, how that started out, you know, very corny humor, mm, you know, yeah. that kind of humor. And I thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's not going to be like the Orville, in my opinion, at all. No, so, no. yeah. Well, Space Water Bear says, looks like a fun ride. Great action shots. More focus on the central mystery and the bridge crew as characters. How long does the absent Spock weigh on the show? Can Teague Notaro be in every scene, please? More Tilly praising science, yay. So Yeah, I did, I did like, I, I don't know who that person is. That was the, was it the engineer that was... Saying like, yeah. Oh, thank God! I thought we were all going to die or something. I, I love that. Oh, that was really yes, good. yes, that's it. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here in postcards, we don't always read all the positive. We do t uh, read the questions and concerns. And Clara Jean Cook says, "I'm really very excited and looking forward to season two. My only concern is that the trailer seemed very action heavy." Although I do enjoy action in Star Trek, I would also like a few more episodes, which are a little slower in pace, but that's a small quibble. Yeah, and I think, you know, with a trailer, they're going to, you know, hype up and show the extreme, you know. And, yeah. and so I think with the action, they're just trying to bring people in at the maximum level. Yeah, they've got to draw the audience in, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Doug Alexander says, I liked it a lot, but I hope I did not see Pike in a blue uniform. Also, uh, also the Connies are supposed to be at the, uh, supposed to be the top of the line. So what does Pike need with a different ship? Enterprise ain't good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I was thinking about that. Like, yeah, why would Pike leave the Enterprise to go beyond Discovery? Well, I guess the Discovery's got something that the Enterprise hasn't. And if those, yeah. if those reds, I can't even, blo um, things that they were seeing, um, that were like 30,000 light years spread across the universe, I guess they might need Discovery to get to those places, maybe. Yeah. Possibly. And then, and I was thinking, well, maybe they just need the experience of Pike, but don't need the Enterprise. That's true. But then I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. So yeah. good question. Mm. I, I liked it, Doug. Mm. And Neil Stringer says, Pike could be good, but still not a fan of all the visual changes. So still, uh, there's still some comments about the uniforms and just the visual change of the bridge and mm. everything like that. So concerns. I mean, it's, it's fair enough. It's not going to appeal to everyone. Not everyone can like everything all the time. So it's, it's right. fair enough. But hopefully yes. there's something in there that no matter how small that, that, um, that Neil and others can like. Uh, Lee Sargent says, uh, LOL, I'm coming at it from a much more jaded point of view. I thought season one was a mess that wasted some really good actors and characters on a plot that always seemed forced together rather than naturally flowing. Whilst I thought the characters were very good, I just don't feel they were given much to work with and that the writing felt in disarray. Compared to Westworld, a show that it feels like it wants to emulate in quality, if not tone, Story arc wise, they are not even in the same ballpark. So I think my own impression of Discovery season one is it had a lot of ambition that it couldn't fulfill. 
So I'm a little wary and cynical of this trailer and what it promises. I don't like redesigned stuff for the sake of redesign, but that's a personal take. I'm a big fan of the cage aesthetic, so to completely disregard it is a shame. I also think it's a shame that these characters aren't getting to forge out on their own, that they feel the need to use the promise of Spock and Pike, etc., when we have perfectly good characters already. And I guess the idea of someone else playing Spock as a cameo or a bit part doesn't sit well with me. Nimoy wouldn't do it for generations, so to have someone completely new stepping into such an iconic role feels wrong to me. Admittedly, if they got Quinto to do it, as uh, to do it, an actor who had the mantle passed to him personally by Nimoy himself, I'd probably be super impressed and say well played. But I'm not even sure if he, if he is even allowed to appear contractually. I think also the comments regarding them trying to be more like the Orville with that elevate, elevator scene are probably a little deserved. So all in all, I'm really happy to be swept up in the next season of Discovery. I really just hope that they can get their act together on the writing front. But cynically, this trailer doesn't convey that. It does, however, definitely suggest a change in tone. And that's a good thing as long as it doesn't go too far. So definitely a lot to unpack there. Um, I just wanted to comment a couple of things. Um, I'm watching Westworld and I am so glad Discovery is not like Westworld. I have, are you watching Westworld at all? Uh, I'm not, but I, have, I saw the first few episodes and, um, I, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan. To, um, I wasn't, I wasn't sucked in con- uh, immediately thinking, wow, this is great. But maybe I just didn't yeah. give it enough of a chance. Well, it's good. Mm. I'm just completely lost all the time in Westworld. So I don't like that aspect of it. And I'm not lost in Discovery. So to me, I like the writing in Discovery a little bit better. Um, So I'm but I can see because Westworld definitely has you guessing and you you never know. Well, I never know what's going to happen. So I, I can see that comparison. I don't know that Discovery is trying to emulate it. Um, but personally, I'm glad that they aren't. Um, and again, that redesign, re-imaging thing, I'm fine with it, but I've always been fine. I haven't been a stickler for, oh, it doesn't look like this. I, but I guess because I'm a next gen and they changed everything, right? So yeah. <laughs> and I, I like I like I like Lee's comments about I think we said it earlier about um, that it's a shame the characters aren't getting to forge out on their own and that they they feel the need to use the promise of Spock and Pike when we've got yeah. other characters we can um, explore. So I get that. Yeah, I do get that. Yeah. I definitely get that as well. And again, with the comment of the Orville, um, yeah, I think it's deserved, but I don't know how much it's going to be that type of humor. Um, and But hopefully you will get swept up in Discovery and that you can find some things to like. And I do think that the tone um, is, is a change. And so maybe that will, you know, like you said, hit, more less or uh, more uh, fans mm. in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Rob, how do you think the fans responded to the season two trailer? Uh, I think if we're going by the comments that we've seen uh, here, I'd say it's more of a positive, excited uh, anticipation um, feel. And there was only a few um little things that people were perhaps a bit um nervous of so maybe Mm -hmm. if you were to split it percentage wise maybe i don't know 75 25 something something like that positive to negative Mm -hmm. um it seemed it seemed like people were much more positive uh about the trailer um than they were negative i would say yeah well and plus i wasn't able for time constraints to read every single comment, but as I was going through them, I'm going to have to say 90, 10 to positive to questions and and nervousness. Um, Cause I did put every question slash nervous response, but I didn't put every good Mm. one, you know? So 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I think definitely I'm feeling that everyone's noticing that the tone is changing. They are recognizing these great characters and, and Pike and number one coming back. Um, I, and I echo, I'm very excited. I think people, um, have, found these characters and that they found a place in their Star Trek fandom. And that to me is very exciting. And and I've said before on postcards and uh, on the edge, like I've come across people that have never watched any Star Trek before except Discovery. And I love finding these new fans and hopefully Mm -hmm. they will, you know, explore the past catalog of Star Trek. So it's very exciting to me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We would love to hear your thoughts on Discovery. And the best place to do that is the Babel Conference. And that's our listeners group on Facebook. You can also find us on Twitter at Trek FM or send us an email using the contact form on our website at trek.fm slash contact. Choose to send to a show and choose the edge. So, Rob, where can people find you on the interwebs? So people can find me on Twitter. I'm at Trekkie Rob. Um, and I also run a Trek book club on Twitter, which is at Trek book club. And we, um, we pick a book, a Star Trek book each month, um, and read it and then come together on Twitter to, to discuss it. So you can find me in both those places. And you're in the Babel conference. And I'm in the Babel conference. Yeah. And I, I need, I need to be in the Babel conference more. <laughs> that's, that's my, that, that's my to do for, for this the rest of this year to be more active (laughs) well you can find me here on the network i co-host the edge with patrick devlin and i also co-host earl gray which is about next generation with richard marquez and justin ozer you can find me on twitter at miss amy nelson but my favorite place is the babel conference We would like to thank our associate producers. They are Norman Lau, Tony Robinson, Thomas Puleo, Lisa Slack, Shoab Mirza, Richard Rutledge, James Muldrow, and Cornelia Reutner. Thank you so much for supporting The Edge and Trek FM. If you'd like to help us keep all of our shows going and even become an associate producer, visit patreon.com slash trekfm for all the details. Well, Rob, thank you again so much for coming on Postcards and making your debut uh, podcasting (laughs) with us. No, thank you so much for having me. I had lots of fun. It's really good. Yes. And thanks for working with me last minute. I just decided, you know, on my vacation, I'm like, when I get home, I've got to do a Postcards. And and you were so accommodating (laughs) to work with me on the time. and, And we've got this big time difference. So thank you so much. No, no problem. So, listeners, join us next time for another episode of Postcards from the Edge, hailing frequencies close. (laughs) 